All right. Hey, Logan Adventures, and welcome to another exciting episode of Traversing the Veil. Yes, this is one of my custom D&D Kiki campaigns set in my squared, screwed up, messed up world that I created. And uh, the people below me uh, are plotting my death in various ways uh, mm -hmm. for the horrible things I'm about to do to their ship. Uh, that being said, um, I'm going to move that a little bit because I like things being centered. I mean, you make some very valid points. I do. Mm. No, not you. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, trying to think of anything interesting going on right now that I need to, to, to talk about. No, I had something cool that was going to happen. We had to d d delay it, so... Yeah, come watch me play D&D. All right. Uh, that means, guys, it has been a hell of a day. Mm. I meant to have a new D&D uh, deep dive out today. That didn't happen. Uh, I'm just exhausted. Mm. Brain doesn't like me today. Uh, anyway, uh, let's... Uh, Let's uh, let's dive in to uh, this gig -gig -gig game. So, close that. The party, after escaping a rather a sticky situation with the Sovereignty Marines, the party came across a strange upended sh -sh ship, seemingly floating in the middle of nowhere. As they got closer, Cracked Snee was able to realize that the ship, the ship was effectively beached. It had landed on an island that had not yet come above the veil. So they decided to explore. They found a strange plant-like creature and these equally strange spore-like things. They found a little bit of gold and a strange metallic ringed b -b ball. And then they found a room that seemed to be alive to a, a point that ended up almost trying to eat them. them. After seeing that, the party decided probably wasn't the safest thing to explore. They went back on their ship and decided to leave. However, after arriving back on the ship, they found they had a stowaway. And that is where we will return to the party. So, um, when we last left uh, everyone, uh, you guys were on uh, the uh, cargo deck and uh, searching around, you found one of those strange pod-like creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, may I make like uh, a nature check or something? to like maybe uh, see if the uh, it's like uh, maybe physically connected with the uh, plane we saw earlier um sure uh, I'll say it'll be more of an arcana check than okay. uh, a nature check but you can make an arcana check Okay. All right. Uh, Dory 20. 
Right, so uh, looking at it it's, uh, itself, um, you get you get the idea that that, that, that um, this this is not a uh, uh, a creature that you're familiar with from your your education. Yeah. But uh, you have heard uh, of um, uh, fey plants and, and things from the f -f fey wild that have uh, something kind of similar to this, where it's normally it's fungus, um, mm -hmm. and there there are some intelligent fungi that have kind of a group mind style Ooh. thing. Um, as far Hard as whether mind. or not. As far as whether or not this one is somehow connected with the plant that you guys saw, you can't be a hundred percent certain. Uh, but it looks like you it. wouldn't rule it out. Let's put it th th that way. Uh. See, the concern Spitwood has—he's heard skittering, and we never f saw any skittering. We heard it. Uh, no movement. Think it's in sort of a hive mind. Well, I'm wondering if there's something that's, you know, running around here. Mm. You brought it on board? Yeah. Uh, do you want to uh, keep looking, or do you want yeah, to get it off? Yeah, uh, let's keep looking. Uh, the, uh, and then uh, regroup here to see if uh, it's decided to uh, spread. Right, so... Um... Thus far, you guys have uh, you guys have been kind of searching as you've been g -g going, uh, and this is the first one you've found. You haven't yet mm -hmm. checked the kitchen uh, right. or uh, the bunkhouse. Okay. Uh, so, uh, where do you guys want to search for the first? That is really loud music. Um. A little quieter. There we go. Okay, so we've, let's see, we've already checked here, so I can go and check the kitchen? Okay. okay. Go and uh, make me an investigation, an intelligence investigation to check. Intelligence investigation. Twelve. Uh, so looking through, um... You're still not super familiar with the ship itself. You literally just got on, uh, off of, of, you know, less than a did a day ago. Um, so as you kind of look through, I mean, this is a this is a decent stocked Giga kitchen. So there's you know there's there's cookware around. There's some bags of flour and and um, uh, other kind of staples around here. And you kind of search through stuff. You see the the very large. Uh, uh, fireplace oven this is style thing uh, uh, at near the uh, bow of the sh -sh ship and as far as you can tell you don't see anything here okay so if there's nothing here that I can visibly see mm -hmm. um, do I, can I move anything around to see if there's anything underneath That's, it or do uh, that was part of the investigation okay. check is, is just kind of how okay, thorough perfect. you were um, okay. to, your, to your knowledge, you haven't found anything well, in there. Okay. So, guys, I don't see anything in the kitchen. Is there mm -hmm. any other places that you guys have on this ship that we need to check around? Uh, the bunker room. Okay. Well, let's go check it out. Okay. We'll check that. So, go ahead and give me uh, an intelligence investigation. Uh, did you check, Smegwick? Can I uh, help him with that? Uh, sure, that would give you an advantage. Okay, good again then. I'll take the second one because that's a dirty, because that's a, actually a nat 20. Oh, Ooh. nice! There you go. 25. So, so the bunk room has not gotten a, a ton of use um, since you guys have been here. Normally, you use it if you're you're transporting actual people. Uh, it can sleep. Uh, each one of the, the beds you see on the map is actually a bunk bed. Um, uh, so the bunk room itself can uh, uh, sleep a grand total of eight people. Um, not a massive amount of p -p passengers, but uh, decent. And so as you're you're looking through, at first you don't really s s see anything. 
Um, and then as you're kind of going through, you realize there's kind of like a corner that you never go in anyway. And as you get in there, you find another one of these strange bulbous oh, masses. No. For just and, the one? Uh, Owie, as you're looking around, you actually find mm -hmm. um, just kind of haphazardly you're doing stuff. And you pull back the covers on one of the beds and you find uh, underneath... Uh, the covers actually going through the bed sheets of one of these uh, bunks is another one of these bulbous uh, uh, things. Great. Would we find two? It's a total of two in here and one okay. in the cargo. So it's infesting the ship. All right, guys, what do you want the plan to be? Do you guys want to try to get rid of these or do you want to. Is there what do you want to do? Is there any way to safely get rid of these without damaging the ship? Um, I asking that as both a player and uh, as Aoi. <laughs> Do you still have the one that you were dealing with, Katie? Uh, yeah. th thus far, no one has has done anything to any of them. They're all just you, sitting you there. Found them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no one okay. Tried to do anything. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I remember, I remember she was that Aoi was stuck yeah. to one. Yeah, I got myself free. Okay. Is the is the mucus that was on the door that we were fighting the same thing that comes off of these ones? Uh, good question. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make me a uh, an intelligence history to check? Kind of compare the twenty one. Uh, nice. So looking at it, uh, it does not seem like uh, that room that mm -hmm. the door that kind we of uh, closed. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem like these are the same things as was in that river room. Yeah. These are much closer to what you found in the plant room. Oh, um, no. God. So okay. if anyone wants to make... I'll, I'll <laughs> say um, uh, a... Uh, a uh, wisdom medicine check if anyone wants to see if you can effectively surgically remove them from your, your sh -sh ship. Uh, anyone else not suck at uh, wisdom? I got z I got plus zero, so I'm I got, neutral. I mean, I got plus two. I got I got oh, I have you. Well, I, I have utility knife. Winner. And <laughs> I have a minus one. No, thank I, you. <laughs> I, got, I got a utility knife, and I'll just like. <clears throat> okay. So the the medicine check specifically would be if you can figure out how you how can to get do it, not actually did it do it. Oh, okay. Well, also, I don't know if this gives me an advantage or not, uh, but I remember I tried using cold, and it seemed to make the door, the door at the very least, got stronger. Yeah, um, uh, Crexley just figured out that, that whatever different. did that door stuff is not the same thing okay. as these. Okay. You guys, you guys kind of noped out of the area with the plants, yeah. so. Well, I remember it was also a cone. I didn't know. I thought the, the plants Again, as well. The yeah. plants run a completely different part of the ship. Yeah. The thing that you guys uh, dealt with there were spores and fungus. These are plants. So okay. it's a completely so, different yeah, thing. And those are different. Okay. There's a 14. 14. Uh, so looking at it, uh, which uh, which one specifically do you want to kind of examine? You've got, you've got three different ones that you want to examine, and they're going to tell you different things. So. Ugh, great. Thanks. You've got two in the. Uh, you've got the one that's on the floor in the bunk hall, one that's actually on the bed in the bunkhouse, and then the one that's over b -b by um, Reggie's stuff in the cargo deck. So which one? Which one do you want to explore? Well, since I'm already here in the room, I'll go ahead and uh, the one that's uh, attached to the ship. Okay. Uh, so looking at it and the and, floor. Uh, and as you explore it, do you want to do entirely visual? Do you want to try and lift stuff up and, and move things? Like, how, how in-depth do you want this discovery mm. to be? Well, I want to be cautious, but I will, like I said, I'll use my, if I can, I'll use my utility knife, since that won't cost me nothing that that gets stuck. Okay. Uh, if that's possible. I know how sticky they are, but I want to know if maybe it's possible, like I somehow, if it's a scraping situation, I just think if it's a patience thing, or... Okay. So, uh, looking Careful. at the uh, the one that's in the bunkhouse and is in the corner, um, 
as you kind of get in and near it, you can see, obviously, it has this very, very, very thin membrane of whatever it is that's sticky. And you're very careful to avoid that. But you notice that not everything on this mm. bulb uh, is covered in that film. Mm. Um, it covers the majority of the outside, but you were able to find some places where it's, it's not covered in this film. And as you look, you can see it has like tendrils that mm. have started burrowing into the wood of the ship itself. Yeah. Oh. Um, so as far as removing it f f f f from the ship, it doesn't seem like it's stuck to the ship that with that sticky stuff. It seems like what is holding it Rooted. to the ship is these Rooted. tendrils. Yeah. So. Hmm. Your hypothesis uh, is probably if you can get rid of the t t tendrils in some way, you should be able to remove it. Do they do they communicate with each other? From what you can see right now, they are currently not communicating Move with anything. Um, so I was thinking maybe oh, I don't want to go back on that shit, but if we kill the big one, they'll all go away. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was uh, <laughs> thinking too, but uh, we're probably not in the best shape to yep. be confronting that thing right now. Well, also, but we are in a controlled environment right now. Yeah. I, I was thinking along those lines, and I was going to go, all right, well, look up the one, because the one on the floor has been a reason. Keep an eye on that one. Keep an eye on the, uh, someone. Look at the one where Reggie's is. Okay. 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 I'll go over here on this one. Right. And... Uh, I'm going to I'm going to use uh, Ray of Frost and see how it reacts, and then see if there's like a reaction to any of the other ones as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, suddenly, you hear a bassoon going. Um, make an attack roll for me. Okay. See, I'll start marching. Sorry, God, you better work. Well, 16. Uh, go ahead and roll did a damage for me. The total of seven. All right, so as you sit there and you cast Ray of Frost, you watch as the Ray of Frost goes and hits the, the creature. And where it hits, you can see effectively what looks like frostbite or frost, you know, freezer burn kind of spread across it a little, a little, a little bit. Um, and uh, you hear it uh, let out this kind of strange high pick shriek. Uh, and which one did you hit? Did you hit the one in the cargo bay or which one? The one on the floor was the one I was going for in the in the bunk in the, the bunk, bunk room. Okay, cool. So we not the one on the bed, the one that was yeah. like the burrowing one. Yeah. So when you hit it, you hear this kind of high pitched shrieking sound, and then you hear an answer from the one in the bed, oh. and you from uh, the uh, uh, the one on the the the, the, the uh, cargo deck. And I would like everyone to go ahead and roll for initiative for me. Oh, ah crap! Dang it! Mm. Uh, <laughs> God dang it. I definitely got a five and you got a seven. Well, we're both going in this together. Oh, God. I sort of got I'm going to be switching <laughs> to physical dice if this keeps going on. This has been several games where my. <laughs> Howie, what you got for, for me? <clears throat> That's horrible. Eleven. 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 Yep. Doom. All right, so uh, let's uh, get some combat going. So, uh, combat, what I need to do first is... Sorry, did you get ours? Uh, I did. Uh, okay. I actually have... Uh, I'm using the encounter builder in ah. uh, D&D Beyond, and when you guys rolled initiative, it put your initiative into my combat tracker. It was super cool. Nice. I like that. Uh, yo, uh, first things first, uh, let's put some dudes on the map. Oh, God. Here's one. There's two. There's three. 
I'm guessing. Okay, so okay. I would have I, I been on this one. Okay, so they all like uh, came together in a hive mind once uh, he tried to uh, get 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 the tendrils off the well, one they, of them. They, they reacted when I did a pew pew on one of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he he yeah. shot it with frost. Hide mine. He forgot to use those nifty Ziploc double seal <laughs> freezer bags, and you can't do that. Uh, yeah. So uh, go ahead and put uh, your minis on the board, uh, which yep. it looks like you all already have. Yep. Uh, and uh, first up is actually going to be uh, these creatures. Oh god. I think of course. Great. So, um <laughs> 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 uh, I need Oh no I don't. I can just roll here. That's cool. Uh, so the first one is gonna be a six. Uh, so the creature kind of uh, you watch as it kind of gets up and uh, despite the fact that it is it is most definitely a plant, it does have a kind of mushroom like look to it as it gets up it has two little limbs and then the kind of sticky part um of it looks kind of like a mushroom kicky cap um and the first thing it does and goes and it kind of swings at you uh and you just kind of hop back so it can't get a a good hit uh the one behind you uh kind of leaps forward and it's going to we're ganging up on it because <laughs> i'm the one that did the damage it's oh, yeah. that's gonna be a 21 to hit Oh my gosh. Even if I shielded, that would hit me. Alright, uh, so then you take five points of bludgeoning damage. It just goes... Bang. Ah! And, that, and then the one that's out here, uh, despite the fact that it sees uh, both Krexny and Ogun, uh, it's not going to... Really I'm the one that pissed it off. <laughs> just <laughs> yet. Dun, dun, dun. Oh gosh! What's the uh, what's the speed on this thing? Oh, it only has twenty. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say they're slow. They're slow little things. It's not that slow. Oh it's god! At you. Hello. Uh, what well, dashed? So that's mm -hmm. all it can, it can do. So, uh, Owie, as you watch this little thing kind of pop up and go over and, and beat on uh, Smegwick, uh, you oh, also god. see this other one just start kind of running uh, t -t 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 towards you guys. <sighs> Boy. What did you do? I don't know. And then, uh, uh, Krexny, as you kind of watch this happen, you suddenly hear oh, there's a little no! hider sound oh, there's more. from They're the uh, kitchen, <laughs> and another one kind of runs out. Yeah. Watch out, well, there's one, another one. Well, it's one way to draw them out. <laughs> True. All right, so that is their turn. Uh, we're gonna go to Jeez. Owie. What would you like? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, that. Well, uh, I'm very much away from my uh, the one that's not like directly in front of me. I'm going to use a uh, firebolt on this dude. Okay. Now, because you have uh, something within five feet of you, um, any ranged attacks you'll be made, uh, you make will be made at disadvantage. Because you mm. do have that, you have that dude Too right close. there. Uh, I thought it was like uh, uh, the guy's two squares uh, above me. Uh, yeah, um, because you, uh, 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 just because you're not attacking him doesn't mean any any time you make a ranged attack, which Firebolt uh, is a ranged spell attack. Yes. Anytime you make a ranged attack with a creature within five feet of you, uh, uh, you make that attack with disadvantage, whether you're trying to hit that creature or not. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Uh, then in uh, that case, I'm just going to uh, try to uh, shock and grass the one in uh, contact with the uh, Smegwick. Okay. Go ahead Hopefully, and uh, uh, make your to the attack roll. Hopefully I don't get stuck again. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Uh, twelve does hit. Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay. You watch his owie kind of 
uh, gets her um, uh, gets her kind of clawed uh, arm out, and you watch as lightning starts dancing across the fingertips, and she reaches towards the creature and grabs it as you watch electricity uh, run over the skin of this creature. What'd you get? All right. Uh, six points of lightning. Lightning. Okay, I have to... Bzzz. Uh, I have to put colors on them so I know which one is which in my right. thing. Uh, so, you did orange, right? That is orange. You did six points of did a damage. Yep. Cool. All right, so as you sit there and you watch as the electricity goes, you can you guys can smell um, this kind of smell of, like, burnt vegetables. Yeah. As uh, you kind of scorch it, and then as you try to take your, your hand away, it doesn't go. Oh, you are great. Attached oh, come on. To this creature. And I will say, um, if you want to cast a spell that has somatic components um, yeah. while you are still attached, uh, you will have to uh, make... Uh, either you will have to not have anything in your other hand, or you can't cast spells with somatic components. Okay. Uh, that being said, anything else you want to do with your tip to turn? Uh, no. All right. Smegwick, what would you like to do? Howie okay. has just fried this thing and is now going... <laughs> Can we tell if it looks dead, or does it just look like it's alive? Uh, it doesn't look dead at all. It looks angry. <laughs> Great. Well, like, well, I do have a question. Now, sure. when I did a ray of when I did ray of frost, did that look like it hurt it, or did it was like it shrugged uh, it, it off? It, it definitely did look like it hurt it. Um, mm. Which, because of that, I should probably. How much was the ray of frost again? It was seven. Seven yeah. total. Yes. Thank you. I should probably put that into its hit points. Uh, it, it definitely looked like it it hurt. Again, you saw that kind of freezer burn frostbite kind of look to it. Um, okay, so electricity not good. Frost good on that one. Okay. Uh, the electricity seemed to to hurt it as yeah. well. So oh, okay. They, My they problem. Took the damage. The the difference being one is a ray of magical frost, and the other is she touched it. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Here. These little buggers have me surrounded. So I have. Okay. So my idea right now is. I don't want to touch it, but it might be hitting me. But I'm gonna like instead, since it's a save on their end i'm gonna do an acid splash on this thing okay so it needs to give it needs to make me a dexterity 16 saving throw well you as you can tell these are very dexterous creatures well two have managed to gang up on me so you never Does know a three Came out of nowhere meet your uh spell dc no you I sure stated D maybe, maybe you a lot again. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll to the damage. Uh, which one are you uh, doing it to, by the way? Uh, greeny. Because that was when I blasted. Yep. Yeah. yep. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Go ahead and roll to the damage. Roll, roll crap on damage. Four. Four. Uh, hey, it was, uh, you didn't touch it, so. Uh, as you sit there and you splash the acid on it, you hear it kind of make that s s scream again. For a brief moment, you watch as the frostbite uh, is actually kind of uh, healed up for a second from the acid warming that spot, and then the acid burns it away, and you watch as more of it gets damaged. Um, it looks upset, but still raring to go. -go. Anything else you want to do with your t -t turn? Oh, I can't do that. Uh, only thing I'm going to do is... No, I won't do that. Um... Oh, I could. Because so far these things are trying to come after me. I don't know if they'll still keep going. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use... I'm going to do a uh, bonus action spell Misty Step. Because if these things are ticked off at me... Well, question is that line of sight directly has to be like a direct line of sight, or is can I just do I know it that, know has to going? be a place you can see according to the uh, spell. okay? So, right now, you can see anywhere in the bunk room, uh, and Owie is going to be blocking your vision slightly outside. So, I would say so probably that would be a little bit far, um, uh, because Owie's in the way, uh, but you know, 10 feet <clears throat> closer, I'd say you could definitely do that, okay? Well, so that, like, that won't really. 
that really won't improve my situation here. So I'll just go ahead. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and stay here. And acid splash is a, a cantrip, right? Yes, it is. And okay. luckily, in fifth edition, it doesn't have like the the old time AOE issues that the previous editions did. I thought isn't that the one that you can target multiple things though, or is that yeah? The, you have the, the caster. The caster has ah. the option of selecting uh, more than one creature if they're still, five feet together. Still cool. All That's right. Better, yeah. So, anything else you want to yeah. do? Uh, that'll be it. And if these little guys want to try something, bring it! Bring it on! All right. Going to uh, Krexty. So, I will, I don't know if it will matter, I'm going to hurl some insults at them in Sylvan. <laughs> uh, Their feelings were hurt. Seem, they don't seem to kick and care. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, if they're, if they're, if they're fey, I was taking a shot. They're, um, uh, you, you, you think they've probably learned how to ignore the trolls. Um, and just because you're a goblin and not a troll, you know, they're, they're, they're able to ignore the goblins as well. Um, uh, Krexty. So, uh, how combat works in 5th, 5th edition. Um, on your turn, you have three things that you get to do. You have a move, um, where you can move up to your speed. You have an action, uh, which you can use to make attacks, cast spells, basically anything kind of big you use mm -hmm. your action for. And then you have a bonus action, which for your character has some kind of interesting things that we'll talk about in a second here. Okay. Um, so, uh, we will get to your pet in a second, but the basics okay. is your pet also has the One. same things. They okay. have a, they have a move, they have an action and they have a, a bonus action. However, okay. they have a limited number of things they can do and they act, um, directly after your turn. So once you're done with your turn, then you get to move your pet and have them do the other things. Okay. So. We'll deal with your pet in a second. We're going to start with just you, you, you. Sure. Um, with movement in the fifth edition, um, you can move, do your action, and then finish your move. You don't have to do all of your movement first. You don't have to do your action, then your movement, or your movement, then your action. You can split it up uh, as much as you want. You just have, for your character specifically, you have 30 feet of movement. And okay. on the map that we're using, every square uh, is equal to five feet. So okay. effectively, you can move six squares uh, in any direction. Diagonals still count as five feet. I know okay. um, math-wise that's not true, but okay. it's easier this way. So uh, so if I'm, for example, here and this one's here, I'd have to make my movement first to get close to him, right? If you wanted to do an attack that requires you to be next to him, like to hit him with your sword, yes, right. you would need to move. Okay, um, gotcha. You have other things available to you if you don't want to hit them with your sword. Being a, uh, a spellcaster, being a, 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 a um, artificer, you do mm -hmm. have spells um, that you can cast. Um, you have your hand crossbow that you can try mm -hmm. shooting it with if you want to go the, 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 that route. Or obviously you have a sword. A sword. So. Okay. So, for example, I have a spell, Heat Metal. Mm -hmm. I can heat my sword? Uh, you could. The thing with Heat Metal is it It heats, would hurt me. Yeah, it heats the entire sword. It would make you drop it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, well. There, there are spells that you can use to kind of enchant weapons to do extra damage. Heat Metal is not that spell. Things like there's a spell called Elemental Weapon. That would do where you could put fire on your sword or something. Heat but I would have is, to have it in my spells to yes, use it, correct? You, okay. you don't currently have that spell. I don't so. have that spell. So, um, okay. With that well, being said, what, um, what, what are you thinking about? What do you, what do you want to do as Kika Kirk? I was thinking about going over to it and putting my longsword through the top of its head like it had a brain. Yeah, you can d definitely do that. That's what I would like to do. Okay. So go ahead and move your character over to any spot uh, that's uh, in a square next to this creature. Um, and then what we're going to have you do uh, is just make an attack roll. Um, uh, on D&D Beyond, you'll see uh, the section that says actions and it shows all the different things. It mm -hmm. should automatically have your attack bonus. So you would roll a d20 and add that. Or if you just click on it, roll 20. On roll. the long sword, correct? Long that's sword. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. Oh, yes. That was a good one. It's 24. 24. Not bad. Uh, so that definitely hits. Um, uh, 
so right next to it, you should see a damage thing. That should be a, a D8 mm -hmm. uh, plus something. Go ahead and click on that. Okay. And that'll roll your damage for you. Nine. Nine. So you do nine points of the damage. So you walk over to it, and you bring your longsword up, and you go, shroom, and you stab through it. And as you do, you you try to pull your longsword. It's stuck. Uh-oh. So you womp, did do womp. damage to, 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 to it. Definitely. Um, oh. I have absorb elements as a spell. That wouldn't be an element. Uh, no, that's done specifically if you get hit by an attack that has an okay. element to it. We'll gotcha. talk about that in a little, little bit. Uh, okay. Now, for your bonus action, yes. you actually have a couple different things that you can do. do. Um, we took that feat. Uh, remember that crossbow expertise feat? So theoretically, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, you could you just him? point, blink, and shoot him. Okay. However, your, uh, mm -hmm. your kitty, mm -hmm. on its turn... Uh, as far as actions that it can take, it can only take uh, the uh, dodge or disengage action um, unless you use your bonus action to tell it to do something different. So um, I can s save my bonus action for him. Yeah, basically you can use your bonus action to say, hey, attack this, and it will do that. And that, and then he still gets his bow. He still gets his action for his turn. So what that would do is, um, on his turn, he could use his action to do what you told him to do. So gotcha. um, if you look on your kick a character sheet, if you go mm -hmm. to the extra section, yep. you should have it and it shows all the things. In order him for, uh, in the section that says actions, mm -hmm. in order for him to use any of those things, you have to use your bonus action to tell him to do those on his turn. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't see anything on his, so it's just uh, him. Hold, please. I hit the wrong b -b button. <laughs> uh, so, we'll go here. This normally goes much f -f faster for folks, but <laughs> uh, new players as well. So if you, if you just click on his name, uh, a little... Uh, oh, side stat block, block okay. will pop up. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and uh, if you, uh, it has all this stuff about how it works and everything. But if you scroll down, you see a section that says actions. Gotcha. Uh, and you see it has two different actions it has there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you wanted it to use like force empowered rend, okay. um, you would, uh, as your bonus action, you would go, "Hey, attack." And it would use that attack against this creature. Um, okay. So then I am going to. Uh, I think I want to try my crossbow and see how that works. Okay, not a, a problem at all. Go ahead and see if I can um, shoot it off. Make uh, an attack with your cuckoo crossbow. Nine. Nine. So um, as you sit there, you're trying to pull. Your sword out, you kind of take the crossbow and you go, Chunk, and it just barely misses the k -k 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 creature because you're still trying to pull your long sword away from the thing. Gotcha. Um, so, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? You still no. have a little movement if you wanted to try and move? Mm, no, because I'm far enough away from everybody else right now. Okay. So, I don't, yeah, I'm okay with that moving. So, now uh, Ogun gets to move yep. a move. Um, okay. So you can move it anywhere you want. Uh, Ogon uh, has a speed of 40 feet. So Ogon's a little bit faster than you. Now, something unique about Ogon is uh, Ogon has uh, what's called a reaction, um, which is something that you can do um, when it's not your turn under certain conditions that are explained in there. So uh, for Ogon, uh, he has a reaction called deflect attack. Mm -hmm. Which is basically if somebody tries to attack you and Ogun is within five feet of you, so right next to you, it can uh, protect basically, me. yeah, protect you. Perfect. So right now he won't be able to do anything because I don't have any actions for him. No. So uh, he can move on his own. He doesn't mm -hmm. require that from you at all. And okay. uh, he can take either the dodge action, which makes it harder mm -hmm. to hit him. Or the disengage, which would basically just let him run away from someone uh, without them taking a swipe at him. Uh, okay. But he can still move, and his reaction 
uh, which is a completely different thing, he can use without you doing it. The only thing you have to okay. use your bonus action for is if you want him to attack, attack effectively. Okay. So. Well, then I'll just move him closer to me. Okay. So you can go ahead and do it. that on yeah. the map. And he'll just be sitting there going, Grrr. Yeah. Cool. So, not a bad turn for your f f first turn into the D&D. Now, I will mention, um, your crossbow is mm -hmm. a ranged attack. Normally, if you make mm -hmm. a ranged attack with when you have someone within five feet of you, like we did for Aoi, yeah. I'd be maybe disadvantaged. Gotcha. Your feet, crossbow expertise, gets rid of that. So you never roll disadvantage because somebody's too close to you. Okay. Make sense? Yep, gotcha. Cool. All so, right. That is the end of your turn. And now, uh, I should be... Fatawi. Let's go. Uh, and Reggie's not here. So, uh, we Reggie's go back to ship. the creatures. Uh, the two creatures... Uh, the one that just got shocked by Owie uh, is going to okay. turn uh, towards you, Owie. Uh, okay. It is going to... Um, uh, I will say you are uh, you are effectively grappled right now. Um, okay. Because you're stuck to it. Uh, and it's going to try and uh, take a swipe at you. Alright. And it gets advantage if you're stuck to it. Okay. So does a 17 hit your armor class? No, it does not. Okay, so the creature kind of swings towards you and you kind of just move your hand a little bit so it's like nah, 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 and it's not able to hit you. <laughs> uh, the one that uh, Smegwick uh, continually is abusing uh, is going to take a swing at him. Bring it! Bring it on. Uh, that is also a 17. That will hit me. All right. And I'm going to let it hit me. No, All right. Oh. Well, you take yeah. eight points of bludgeoning damage as it <laughs> punches you again. Hey, make me a dexterity sixteen saving throw. Oh uh, boy! As I've already mentioned, these are highly dexterous creatures, so it will have uh, no problem. Should, should I make a saving throw too? Nope, you're fine. Okay. This is um. This is a two. It's one target. They have, they have a dex bonus of zero, by the way. So that is, right. that is just a two. Ooh, yay. See, Smeg would just kind of like his eyes kind of just flash copper real quick. And you're like... <laughs> and fire shoots out of his mouth. Ooh. And it th does... 21 points of fire damage. <laughs> so... Uh, as this thing kind of clocks you, you watch as uh, Smegwick kind of goes across, kind of checks to see if he's bleeding. Ha! And this fire goes up. And you have a really nice kebab there. <laughs> Still standing? Uh, no. <laughs> right? Uh, Not done. Done? Done. In my, in my head, it's like a, like a little thing. Just like we're running. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't even. It didn't even get a chance to. You like instantly barbecued it. Did the other ones react to it? Uh, they seem upset. <laughs> oh uh, great. Uh, that being said, uh, not cool. Seeing not uh, cool, man. <laughs> seeing Krexney has just skewered its friend here. Uh, this dude is going to walk up and hey. try to bop you. <laughs> Uh, Great. So uh, so it gets a 22 versus your armor class. Uh, At 13. 13. Armor so class. that does hit. Uh, you are going to take... Come on. Ogun's reaction can't apply to this canic because of where it is. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, no, is? it still could. Um, so oh, you, you have a choice. Oh, because it's next to her? Oh. Because it's five feet. It's right next to me. That's why I moved him. Yeah. Oh, I thought it applied to the enemies. Okay, cool. So no. I, can put, I can put block on with him? Uh, yeah, basically what that would do is it would uh, give me disadvantage on the uh, okay. attack roll. So I would roll twice and take the lower of the two options. But yes. your um, every uh, creature has one reaction that they can mm -hmm. use per round. Um, so since he didn't use one, he can use so, it? So he can use it. Uh, however, if the other one it attacks you, he wouldn't be able to use it on the next one. Great. So. Okay. So it is it is up to you if you want to use it. Well, the it. other one's skewered to my sword, so I'll I'll let yep. him use this one. That's perfectly fine. So yep. the second attack roll uh, is an 18. Uh, 
So, uh, I think that's slightly lower than the, the first attack. Uh, so does an 18 still hit your armor pick the class? Yeah, I'm 13. 13, yeah. So, <clears throat> so uh, because both of them would have hit, you're still gonna mm -hmm. uh, you're still gonna get hit. Uh, and the damage was four. I rolled it already. Okay. Um, so you take four points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, the one that uh, has your long sword sticking out of it uh, is going to take uh, an attack on you. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's only going to be a 10. Yeah. your armor class. So it kind of swings towards you and... Um, <laughs> what kind of armor do you have again? Do you remember? Studded armor? That one? Yes, yeah, studded leather. Uh, so as it does that, it hits one of the hardened <laughs> leather uh, b -b plates uh, that you have that are part of your armor, and it just kind of bounces off of it. Just... <laughs> uh, and that is the end of their t -t turns. Uh, Owie, um, if you would like to remove yourself, you can make a strength athletics check as an action to take, kind of disengage yourself from this creature. Uh... Yeah, I think I'll give it a shot. Okay. Uh, ah, that might be enough. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah, that's you. Like, and you're able to get your your hand back. You have this kind of film left on your hand a little bit. Your hand is still a little bit tacky, but yeah. it's free. Uh, what else do you want to do with your turn? Uh, unfortunately, I don't really. Have a lot I can do since uh, that was my action. Let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, I. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, There we go, action surge. All right, so you kind of feel this welling of energy inside yeah. of you and you lean into it. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take a shot at the uh, red mark one uh, engaged by Crutchley. Okay. All right, and uh, with a uh, firebolt. And again, that'd be at disadvantage. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, that is a 13. Uh, 13 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay. Uh, that is a 6 points of fire. All righty then. And you said which was it red or blue you were aiming at? Red. Red cool. Uh I totally did that wrong. How much damage is it again? Sorry. Six. Six points of fire damage. Uh, so you sit there and you fire off this b -b bolt of flame. It goes and it hits the creature and you hear another one of those kind of shrill things and it kind of turns to look at you. Uh, but it doesn't do anything else. Uh, anything else uh, you want to do with your t -t turn? I'll uh, end my turn. All right. So, uh, Smegwick, what do you want to do? All right. First off, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up one space. And I'm gonna risk an attack of opportunity from that thing. Okay. Uh, it is gonna take a swipe at you. Wish it would. Gets a grand total of ten. Ah, you suck. Sorry, yeah, it's me rolling. Too. I mean, what do you expect? You've been you've been rolling pretty good on hits. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, I'm going to. Yep, it's going to do. I'm going to do an Elder's Blast in this thing. All right. Go ahead and make um, both your attack rolls. Um, yep. Yeah. First shot. Good, got. Thankfully, I got a plus eight. Fourteen. Definitely hit, hit, hits. That one. I have a little agonizing blast, pal. Thirteen points on that one. Ooh. All right. As your first uh, bolt uh, strikes into it, the force of the b -b blow actually pierces uh, the creature, and you watch as like cracks go around it, kind of like if you've uh, uh, ever uh, like broken like an eggplant or, or or a watermelon or something, and the cracks just kind of go yeah. out. Same basic principle, and you can see this kind of green oozing liquid coming out of it. Mm -mm. Give you another one. And it's 15. Definitely hits. Go and remember roll the damage. Wait, how much damage did you do with the last one? 17 poisoning? Uh, 13. That is a lot of did it damage. Oh, you get to add Agonizing Blast. Because I have Agonizing Blast, yep. So going. Eldritch Blast doesn't do that much damage. Yes, it does. <laughs> and how much? You said yep. 14? Uh, 14 for this time. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you hit it again, pfft, kind of explodes, and I totally just <laughs> spit on my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it did. Um, and it kind of pops. Uh, owie, you feel your back <laughs> kind of get this little <laughs> slime on it. Uh, but the creature itself is most definitely... Da -da 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 okay. That was five. 10, 15, 20. Now, if I, I, I can't move any, because it would be double movement to go through. Uh, yeah, moving alley, through right? an alley space is, is uh, difficult terrain, yeah. uh, and you don't have enough so movement to get fully I'll say through. Diagonal. It, so. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Actually, if I go 5, 10, 15, I'll guess I am stuck there. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just stop right there. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, that's going to bring us to Crexy. Me. So, All right, so go ahead. Really quickly, I want to. Um, Did I count that wrong? I, I apologize. Uh, no, oh, you no, are. No, because I, I, I used five. Okay, yeah, so I used, used five, five to go to the corner. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I wanted to uh, bring up uh, one of your second level spells, uh, Crexy, okay. uh, because it is something that's a little bit unique. Uh, you have a thing called Branding Smite. Mm -hmm. um, which is a bonus action. Basically, what it does is uh, you basically uh, enchant uh, uh, an item uh, that you're uh, a weapon that you have, uh, so that the next time uh, you hit a creature with any weapon attack, so any mm -hmm. uh, thing, um, uh, the attack does an extra two d six radiant damage uh, to the target and makes it glow for a little bit as you actually brand it. That would take your okay. bonus action to do that, but it would be something. So I can do the bonus action first. So if mm -hmm. I, I use branding my... <laughs> like, Sorry, I can't. Play. I want to play two. <laughs> Nor Pupper. I want to play two. Um, I can use my branding smite on my long sword. Can I still use my long sword with that thing on it? So right now, because your long sword's stuck, you can't yeah. attack with the long sword. You could use okay. your reaction, or you could use your action to try and pull it out. But then you but wouldn't, then be, wouldn't able be able to attack. To fight. Mm -hmm. But you do still have your your crossbow. So, and I don't. I, I so I can still hit the one next to me, with it, with no um, disadvantage. Right? You said. Uh, okay. So let's try yeah. it. I'm going to use branding smite on my crossbow. Okay. And I am going to hit. I guess the one that I'm already doing damage sure. to. Sure. Hopefully can, it. Oh, you dies. can do it on range. That's nice. Uh, the spell specifically says with a weapon attack before the spell ends. So mm. that's nice. Okay. So yeah, go. So, uh, let's do that. And then I hit. Do I just roll the dice, or do I have to hit my attack first? Uh, you have to. You have to make your attack roll first. The nice okay. thing about branding smite is mm -hmm. it doesn't go away until you actually hit something. Oh, okay. So if you miss this attack. Branding Smite, you will be concentrating on it, which we'll talk about concentration later when it's more relevant. But concentration yeah. basically means you can only concentrate on one spell at a time. So Branding okay. Smite, you're concentrating on it until you hit something. Make okay. sense? Yep. Okay, so, so I'm going to... Go ahead. Uh, roll my crossbow. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yep, 23. 23. Nice. That definitely hits. So okay. go ahead and roll the damage and uh -huh. then add another 2d6 to it. So, okay, so that's seven. Mm -hmm. And then roll 2d6. Uh, 2d6. That's a six. Let's just go on the left right here. So it's two and four, so six. Okay, so six and six is seven is... Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen, thank you. Numbers are f -f 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 fun. So, um... See, I was wondering if radiant damage was going to do more damage to these things or not. Hmm. Uh, we'll say. That's a good question. You're about to f -f find out. So, yeah. uh, Crixty, as we, we, we talked about before, your uh, kind of artifice syring um, mm -hmm. is actually based on your kind of calligraphy and, and drawing symbols and th things like that. So just to add a little flavor to how this, this spell works, um, feel free to correct me on any details. Um, that you would prefer to be a different way. But the way I kind of visualize this happening is when you prepare your spells in the morning, you basically created these little artistic depictions of spells, and one of them is Branding Smite. And so you take out one of these little cards that has your artistic depiction of the spell, you slap it onto your crossbow, Ooh. the crossbow starts glowing. You kind of look at this creature and go, Hi! And the bolt fires out as it hits the creature. Nice. You see this burst of radiant energy. And you watch the creature sit there glowing for a little bit as you, the radiant energy burns the creature, uh, killing it. Yes. So she technically uh, made her crossbow into a dull disc. Yeah, <laughs> basically. It's time to do 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 Yeah, because I my brain went to Yu-Gi-Oh too. <laughs> uh, right. So yeah, as you uh, as you strike this thing with your k -k crossbow, uh, as you do it, you watch as the uh, bolt goes into it. You see the radiant burst of energy, uh, and you watch as the thing kind of explodes and burns as the radiant energy kind of melts all the kind of spittle and everything into a little smoldering pile of creature at your feet. Goodbye, sucker. Uh, anything else you want to do? That was your action and your bonus action. You still have movement if nope. you want to. Um, no, because the thing's probably going to catch me. Well, let's move closer to them. How about that? Yep, you can do, do that. Um, so where let's would you like here. to? So, um, in 5th uh, edition to D&D, &D, one of the reactions that any creature can take is called an opportunity attack. And basically what that is, is if somebody uh, leaves their uh, weapon range, um, they can take a swipe as they were run away. So if you do move down okay. there, uh, uh -huh. that little dude is going to try and take a swipe at you. So. Um, and no matter how much I move? Yeah. Um, if you move out of its attack range, so uh, as long as you stay within five feet of it, it won't get an opportunity attack. As soon as you get more than five feet away from it, it gets to take an opportunity attack. Does that make sense? Gotcha. So All right. if you want to, you can you can uh, uh, move and, and hope that it misses you, or you can stay <laughs> no, there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll that's perfectly her. fine. <laughs> uh, if you wanted to okay, reposition okay. yourself in a different spot around it, you can do that. Like I said, it only gets an opportunity attack if you leave. Okay. Yeah, we'll stay here. And then um, for Ogun, nothing. I'll just have him. Now, when you say five feet, as long as he's five a space away from me, not in between me and him, like he can be here, or does he as have to be here? As long as he's within five feet of you, is my okay. understanding. I'm going to check to be on the safe side. Oh, it specifically does say... Um, the defender uh, imposes disadvantage on the attack roll of one creature it can see that is within five feet of it. So, uh, so he, Ogon would have to move where the dead one is for it to be effective. Yeah, either there or it could technically move up here too, just as long as it's within five feet of the creature. Okay, there you go. So, Perfect. Yes. Dun -dun, moved. All right. Now, Ogon technically still has an action it can t -t 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 take. Um, the only two things that it can do is disengage, which disengages the action you use if you don't want someone to hit you with an opportunity attack, since it doesn't need to do that. 
um, mm-hmm. you can just say, well, he's going to dodge that. Um, okay. And that basically just means any attack against him has disadvantage. Okay. So if he's, so he's not doing anything else, dodging. dodge is yep. always a good idea. Dodge. He's going to dodge. All right. Uh, with that being done, congrats on your first kill, by the way. Yay! Oh, um, guy. Uh, and it was glowing at that. Yeah. I feel accomplished. Uh, the creature in f- f- front of you um, looks less than thrilled. Uh, so it's... Uh, oh, you have your longsword back since you blew up the one that your yeah, longsword was stuck yeah. to. Uh, it is not pleased with the situation. It's going to make a beeline f- f- for uh, the stairs. As it oh. leaves, both you and Ogon can take opportunity attacks if you would Yes, like. I want to. I want to kill it. Let's try it. So, so because it's a new one, opportunities just roll for like my sword or yeah, my bow. Uh, you cannot use a ranged attack, a ranged weapon to make an opportunity attack. It has to be a melee. It's my so sword. It has to be your sword. Yeah, and then the Ogun can just well, use a crossbow his, expert. Uh, crossbow expert doesn't allow you to make ranged attacks with your uh, as uh, opportunity attacks. Oh. It it means that it you don't make disadvantage. Uh, but it doesn't specifically give you the ability to use a ranged weapon to make an opportunity to me attack. I don't believe okay. there's a feat that does that, to be honest. But it'd be a cool feat. I thought they had a ranged attack of opportunity. Maybe I'm just thinking of, maybe I'm just thinking of Warcaster. Yeah, Warcaster lets you to, to do that. And there might be a range, like maybe mm-hmm. Sharpshooter or something, but I don't th- think so. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then um, Ogun can just use Force Empowered Rend as his kind of basic <laughs> attack. Okay. So, go ahead and... Um, Let's roll your log sword attack first. Okay. 18, 24. That definitely hits. Go ahead and, and roll then... damage on the, the, that. Yes. 11. 11, not b- b- bad. So as it's running away, uh, you, you pick up your long sword that still has a little bit of that guck on it, but the radiant glow of the long sword is starting to burn it off. You just kind of flip around and go, shoom, slice into the creature as it's running. Ah, <laughs> then you turn to Ogon and go, get it, girl! Finish him! Boy, I'm not sure what the gender of your, your robot. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy. He's a he. Does he have to roll anything to use it, or? Uh, yeah. So, um, if you look at the the, the stat block, force empowered uh-huh. rend, um, okay. right after melee plus weapon attack says plus six. Okay. He had a three. All right. So three plus six is a nine, which just barely misses because this thing has dope for armor class. Um, Wait, did you? That's a d six. Yeah. No, you want to roll a d twenty. And oh. then add six to it. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, any attack roll is always made with a d20. Gotcha. Well, that's nine. Nine? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. So it was, did you get a nine on the... Uh, I got a nine on the block, yes. Uh, so it'd be a nine plus six. So that turns oh, to yes, a 15. I got 15. Watch out now. Uh, so that does hit. Um, so the damage is 1d8 plus 3 force damage. So roll a d8, add 3 to it. d8 plus 3. 11. Nope, oh, yep, that's 11. I have to do... All right. So, um, as you hit it with the little long sword, uh, Ogon kind of turns and goes, and it hits it with his big metallic c- c- claws. You see it rip into more of the c- 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 creature. Um, for a brief moment, you watch as Ogon is stuck to it for a, a brief second, and the creature just goes, Rah! and and kind of bats it off and continues running away. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, and it heads upstairs. Uh, All right. <clears throat> so, that is the end of its turn. That brings us to Owie. What do you want to do? Uh, he's getting up. Did I see it going upstairs? Yeah. Super I'm, obvious. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm hanging up there. Okay. Finish so, we'll it. go to the mid deck. Uh, go ahead and put your. Uh, okay. 
your mini uh, right on the stairs there. Yeah. Uh, do you remember, I think you moved, was it 15 feet to get there? Uh, yeah. And then I just need a mushroom dude. Uh, he, uh, uh, he's literally right there. Uh, stairs over here. These are the, the stairs okay. down. Okay. Is there a way to take my person off of here since he's not here yet? Uh. I'm just gonna move into Yeah, you can just move it there for, 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 for right now. Uh, otherwise, if you just click on it and click delete, it'll just take it off and then you can redrag it on when gotcha. you need to. Uh, so it's literally right next to you, Howie, when you get up this is the stairs. Because it's it's slow. Oh, it has 20 feet of movement. Uh, is the uh, deck clear to... Uh, is there anything in the way at all? Uh, well, Either over here is, fun. you know, your living room. But uh, there's nothing like, in the direction uh, of there. Uh, within, um, like, uh, diagonally in front of me. No, just stairs. It's a risk I'm gonna take. Lightning dragons! Uh, is that a saving throw from, uh, Eric? Uh, yes. Is that a deck save? Yep, deck save. Cool. We got a 12. Okay. Full damage. Cool. Go ahead and roll to the damage. Okay. Let's see. E6. Also, uh, correct me if you want, uh, I have no problem with people rolling physical dice if you don't want to use uh, the stuff on there. Um, so feel, feel free to purchase your own dice if you would like. They have some. They're water and glittery. I was about to say, they become an addiction. I know. You will, you will buy more and more and more. <laughs> Cookie yeah. math rocks! Yeah. I've already bought too many. So. My favorite right now are the water ones. They're like clear blue with water and like glitter. Uh, for uh, Ogon, just because uh, you can't roll him into the D&D Beyond, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. might want to uh, just use your dice for, 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 for Ogun to kind of give you a, a separation in your okay. mind of these are how Ogun works. It's entirely up to you. Um, gotcha. Yeah. I just like to give people options and dice. Rolling physical to the dice is fun. Like, there's no two ways about it. It's it's fun to do. So what do you got for the damage for me? Uh, 14 points of lightning. All right. Uh, claim your kill. Oh, uh, if, yeah. uh just to kind of explain this, um, Crixie, uh, mm -hmm. if you get the kind of killing blow on the last monster, the biggest monster, uh, I will ask you to claim your kill, which basically means describe the cool as as cool as you want to <laughs> how you kill this creature. Okay. And then I will, you know, add a little bit of my Emphasize. own flair to it. Okay. So okay. claim your kill, Aoi. I'm going to uh, try to uh, remember that. Uh, Eldritch Blast and, uh, and using uh, and using my rapier to uh, I'm going to uh, like uh, make my uh, try and make my uh, dragon raft into a small orb and then I'll uh, use the rapier to push it uh, uh, into the uh, plant dude. Okay, so uh, Owie, as you kind of run up, you see the cook a creature there, and it kind of turns you and goes, Aah. and you sit there, and you can you can feel kind of the lightning in the back of your throat starting to come up mm -hmm. as you're getting more and more angry at this creature that has you know possibly ruined your outfit because you don't know how hard oh. it's going to be to wash this out. She has it all over her back. So, so yeah. you're sitting yeah. there, you can feel the lightning kind of coming up, and you kind of go, Aah. and as you do that, you kind of pull your sword out, and you and you breathe onto it, and you watch as the lightning kind of trails across your rapier, and kind of gathers in the f -f front. You know, and you thrust it in, and you see this huge this explosion of electricity, and, and you know, uh, insides of this c -c 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 creature. You basically Gallagher it. Uh, as it goes all across the, the, the decks, splatting mm. away f -f 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 from you. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I got him! 
All right. I am uh, not cleaning this mess. And uh, after she does it, she uh, uh, blows uh, off the tip of her rapier uh, like a gun. Like it's smoking hot gun. All right. Smegwick limps up. Good job, kid. <laughs> Spit some blood. You, you alright? Yeah, I gave as good as I got. Ah! Mm-hmm. It's like fighting stick em. Yeah. Not my favorite. I'm not cleaning this, so who's doing it? Thomas. Yes! Good idea! <laughs> mm. He's good at that anyway. And you you just see him toilets. like... <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you do? <laughs> as as Smegwick is just jack, just <laughs> messed it up. On <laughs> Where do you keep the mop and bucket? <laughs> yeah. oh, he just kind of dejectedly goes over. Sorry. You hear him, he's like, oh, it moves with the what? Ah. <laughs> oh, Thomas, I just, like, basically just points to him. It could be worse. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, kid? I can, I can mend that later. <laughs> no, it's okay. <sighs> now that we're done fighting, can I still use things like the um, cure wounds and that kind Definitely. of thing? Um, by the way, uh, make sure to mark off that you used a second level slot for, oh. for um, Branding Smite. Gotcha. Uh, and then, yeah, if you want to use Cure Wounds, again, you can cast it at first or second level. Just make sure you mark off uh, whenever you use this as a spell. Okay. Uh, Does anybody need it? Everybody's okay? Yeah, I'm relatively okay. I got messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want, me to, you want me to use it for you? I wouldn't say no. Okay. So what's the difference between you see it at first level and second level? Just uh, just how much it heals. First level, it's a D8 plus your intelligence. Second level, it's 2D8 plus your intelligence. So it just heals Do you need more. a lot or do you need a little? I'm, I mean, not to be too mad. Like, I'm 33 out of 59. Ooh, yeah. Okay. If, <laughs> I'll use the... And wait, how fast can they reset these? How fast do they reset? Uh, you get all of your spell slots back after you take a long rest. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, that's why yeah, I was running. Uh, so basically, at the beginning little... of the day, you get all of your your spell slots back. So yeah, so because we've only had one short rest in this part of the adventure, a long rest will be soon. Theoretically, basically, you have this many spell slots per day, uh, and at this particular point in time, uh, after uh, running away from the b- b- bad guys, uh, it is getting late in the day. Okay, gotcha. Perfect. Okay, I will use it. So just click and see what you get, sir. Oh, ee, my bad. So, Nine. I'll take whatever you got. Thanks. Uh, you hear my jaw pop. Right? So you guys do watch as, uh, uh, again, to add a little flavor. And you are welcome to do this as well. Uh, uh, correct okay. me anytime you cast a spell. Um, uh, f- feel free to flavor it or describe how you cast a spell. Um, but to kind of get people familiar with how you cast your spells you watch her and go oh i can f- f- fix that and you watch and she just takes out this really beautiful uh calligraphy uh k- k- kit like japanese calligraphy kit with the the brush and everything and she takes out uh this paper and you watch her just kind of and she kind of draws this very very nice symbol and she blows in it for a little bit and goes over and just kind of places it on you and you watch as it kind of melts into your skin and your wounds start to knit themselves as the uh, symbol she just drew kind of melts into you. Oh, yeah. I'm awesome. <laughs> not going not gonna to argue. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, sir. No problem. Thank you for getting two of those things out of here. Mm. I had trouble with one. Mm. Yeah. Look at that, it. So. Well, <laughs> Now what do you guys want to do? We're still attached to that island, correct? Uh, or technically, yeah, off? you still have, I believe you guys still have the gangplank going to the, uh, or oh, did you guys, oh, I thought we, did you guys oh, leave? I thought we left. I think, I, I think we you were did. Going I think to, I remember yeah. that. 
So yeah, you guys, okay. you guys are currently in open veil. So. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think if we hadn't left, we'd be hearing a lot more screeching coming from the other ship. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't want to fight all those. Now I'm glad we didn't stay and fight all those, because if it took that long for four, yeah. that would have been a nightmare. Well, we just stay in the gangplank. I would have just, like, <laughs> fire breath. All really. of them at the same time. I... I'll use my action, and I'll summon Spitwit back now that I think it's safe. Because he only has—he still only has one hit point. Oh god! I thought you said you were gonna fix him. Remember? I, I don't have any healing capability for that. Can my things heal creatures too, or just people? Well, you can, uh, yeah, as long as a, a creature is a any any kind of creature, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Really, the only thing that your your a long rest will take care of it. on, uh, I believe, oh, okay. is going to be Ogun. Uh, because he's a construct, but you actually have a, a cantrip called mending, which you can use yeah. as many times as you want, and that will actually fix Ogun. So. Ogun. And then when we rest, our hit points go back? Yep. Or do yeah. they? Yeah. Oh. So a long rest gives you all your spell mm -hmm. slots back. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you all your hit points back, and then if you've used any hit dice, um, you get half of your hit dice b -b 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 back from a long gotcha. rest. So. Half of your total? Half of your total hit dice. Okay. So... Well, um, what do you guys want to do? We can divvy up this gold that I got in my bag. Well, I am thinking one thing. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, how sure are we that the ship is clean now? Because they all kind of ran when we when you fought one of them. They all kind of yeah. ran together. So they'll probably be out. You want to check again? As, as, as far as you know, uh, you guys have searched every room on the okay. sh sh ship. <laughs> Okay. So, um, as of right now, you're relatively certain you you have gotten them all because you you have already checked every the thing. Uh, yeah. One of the things um, that I actually uh, b -b 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 brought over from uh, Open Legends, which is another system that I run Giga Games in, uh, is the idea that every roll m -m matters. Mm. Um, so the checks that you guys did uh, for every room is effectively um, the shit. Uh, oh, well, that's that's the check for you going through everything mm. in the, 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 that yeah. room. So going back in and quote, quote rechecking it, uh, I'm going to use the same roll you got before to give oh, actually okay. some weight to you guys rolling. Because if I if you guys could just keep re-rolling until you get the number for you want, piece. there's no there's no reason for me to make you yeah. roll. You will oh, eventually okay. score high enough. So. I am curious. The one because I I guess the one was like you know was hiding just out of reach of a Krexty. When she checked in there, mm -hmm. in the kitchen, wherever, like, because like, I'm guessing you would have mentioned, like, it came mm -hmm. from there. Was it helping itself to any of our food or anything, or was it just hiding? You can go look. Okay, I'll go check real quick because it okay. came out. Of... So in my mind, in my mind's eye, I just see these little buggers, just like. So you do <laughs> see um, over by the uh, the oven itself. Um, you see some pots and pans that have kind of been knocked over that you assume that's where it came from. As you go in there, you actually can see where it kind of burrowed into the ship. You can see the ship actually looks like it rotted slightly. I got some where mending. Where it was birdied. Uh, okay, can I fix that? Uh, mending would... Uh, because it's, it's technically rotting... Um, mm. As opposed to like being broken or anything, Got actually, it. some of the material of the ship has has was absorbed oh. by this creature. Oh, um, it actually, ate away at it. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mending okay. wouldn't fix it, but looking at it, it's not structural damage. Okay. Um, it it looks bad, but it's not going to affect the sh 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 how the ship works. Or rug over okay. It. Got any wood, putty? <laughs> uh, Prestidigitation or something similar to that would fix the discoloration and other things like that. Mm. Gotcha. All right. Well, where are we sailing to right now? Where is the ship mm. moving towards? I think the direction you originally chose was anywhere but there. <laughs> uh, so uh, you guys are roughly around, uh, if you look at the map, you guys are roughly around here. Uh, so the closest place to where you are uh, the closest large city, major city, is Ebia, um, which uh, is kind of a, a more dangerous place. It's 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 known for uh, more seedy types being there. Uh, otherwise, there's Voxus Landing, 
uh, which is a little bit for uh, EBI is about three or four days away. Vox's landing is closer to a week. Um, mm. And Vox's landing is, is, you know, the biggest kind of trade station uh, in the sovereignty. So. And I'm thinking maybe we want to try to go to Ebia first because we're still being chased by that dick admiral. Uh, yeah, you're right. Can we get more information about them by going there? Maybe see if anyone's heard anything would be a bad idea. Right. Mm. Meanwhile, let's check the loot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So again, you it's guys fine. found uh, roughly about 400 gold worth of uh, gems and coins and other things like that. Uh, and then uh, you also found this strange ball. Uh, the uh, bolt of silk. Uh, oh yeah, the silk. Yes, yeah. Uh, and the silk itself, uh, uh, a, f a, a few bolts actually of, of this is silk, uh, and those were uh, worth uh, another. I believe I said two hundred. Two hundred total, or two hundred each. Uh, two hundred total. The silk itself is two hundred to the total. So, yeah, you can record that on character sheets. Is you don't have to record it as silk worth two hundred. You can. Just record it as 200 Where do you record it at? Uh, under your equipment, you should be able to, or inventory. Inventory. Um, uh -huh. There's a little thing uh, on the right uh, mm -hmm. uh, that shows this little kind of trapezoid kind of thing that's gold. Uh, and if you click on that, it shows all the different oh, money gotcha. that you have. And you can add. Now, I've, I've been keeping track of the money. <clears throat> oh, okay. Would, okay, I don't know if you want Okay. I'm just the accountant, and all you can keep it though. <laughs> now, if you wanted to like, if you like, no. if, if someone wanted to keep track of like the physical stuff, the physical stuff. <laughs> but if someone wanted to keep track of like the physical stuff, it's really bad. Is when she starts uh, forcing you to use generally uh, what is it? Generally accepted, accepted accounting, accounting principles. principles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure it's gap, you know, no. gap ready. Now. The silk mm -hmm. counts as an asset. However, the damage to the ship, we can count that as a depreciation. depreciation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hated all of my accounting <laughs> courses. So <laughs> I learned oh, all this man. stuff that I will never, ever use because I'm never going to be in a kick accountant. It's beneficial. You'll see one day. Well, if I, ever get, if I could ever work again and actually be a part of a business, yes, it's incredibly useful to be able to read books. Oh yeah, uh, you absolutely. Know, accounting books, but uh, as of right now, I just hate that I know all this. This is the only section of my capstone that I had to redo. Like everything else, like this is a really we had to make up a fake business for my capstone. Yeah. And yeah, they're like everything's good except your accounting page because you counted. I think I counted something as an asset that was actually a liability, and so like yeah, you have to change that because that math doesn't, doesn't work. work that way. So I'm like, oh, crap. But everything else they were really happy about. Since, I don't know, because you have your bag of holding, do you want to keep track of, like, the physical stuff? Okay. And who's got the who's got the, the, the Bolero Bowl? Uh, Owie. Owie okay. got that? Okay. If you guys mm -hmm. will want to, um, just to make things this is easier, um, I have seen some groups that will, uh, you'll have personal gold, which you would check on your character sheet, and mm -hmm. then um, in the notes section, um, you can go to add other, uh, and you can somebody can keep track of the quote unquote party gold if you guys want to have that differentiation. Otherwise, you mm. can just say everything is p -p party gold. It's entirely up to you guys. Um, so far, we've been doing option. party gold, but if we want to, we can talk about. So that if I go too. to a shop and I buy it, and we have it as a party, I don't have to be by whoever's holding it to use it, right? No. Okay. This this is this is just a, a, a way to keep track of things. Okay. Uh, as far as who has what amount of m m money and things like that, we can role play that. Like that's okay. that's yeah. not something we need to, to, to deal okay. with. I'm, I'm not that into realism. <laughs> How much okay. does it cost? Money. Money. Mm. Cost money. Okay, so I have the silk. I'm, I'll keep track of that. Okay. All right. Two bolts silk. Yep. 100, 100 GP each. It's, ni it's yep. nice silk too. Oh, so all right, you said so three days to get to, what did you say, Eba? Eba? Ebia. Ebia. Yeah. Are those real, like, 
our whole character sleeps or do we have to yeah, like, that's, interact throughout that day? Uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if you guys want to have like conversations during the, the, that time, we can, we can role play those out. Um, okay. If there's specific things you want to do, we can. Otherwise I can say, well, three days have passed. Like it's, it's entirely up to you guys. Um, well, there's be, there will be one thing Smegri wants to do, but he wants to do that after he's had at least one mm -hmm. day's rest. Yeah. Uh, generally what I t tend to do if there's long periods of travel, you guys would have effectively downtime. And I would go, hey, is there anything your character wanted to do while that was the happening? three days lapse. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with you being an artificer, um, you may start, yeah, you may start coming up with ideas of things that you want to eventually add to Ogun or, you know, other th the things. And you and I can talk about that outside of the game. And then okay. anytime in game, I go, well, you have downtime. You can go, I'm going to work on this project or this project. That's what artificers do is they okay. tinker in that. So sure. Perfect. You're, you're welcome to do, 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 do that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, uh, oh. does anyone have anything you want to do in this three day time p -p -p period, uh, getting to Evia? Yeah. Well, if, uh, the next day after Smeg was like, I'm, I'm going to guess got a long rest. Yes. You guys yeah. would have had a long rest a couple hours after this whole of event. So, okay. and let's mm. let just reset spit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you did. Uh, okay. On D&D Beyond, um, at the yeah. top of it, there's actually a button that says Long Rest. Yep. Long Rest. Yep. So if you hit that, it does it all for you. And this is Confirm. Are you yes. sure? Click to Confirm, too, because otherwise you won't sure? do it. <laughs> Are you yeah, sure? I saw that. Uh, Spit, Smegwick is going to go, uh, everyone wants to do whatever they want. Uh, FYI, if anything goes hanky, Spitwit is going to go get help unless someone wants to stand by. Mm -hmm. he, holds, he holds up the potion. That he got from the yeah. from the bazaar. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. He's gonna. He's gonna, first. He's gonna go to the bed. He's gonna like. Cause he he probably he knows he's probably gonna get knocked out. Okay. And he's gonna. He's gonna kiss the sky. So as you uh, do, 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 do drink it, um, how familiar are you with cream soda? Very much so. Somewhat. I love cream soda. I love cream soda. So uh, it's it's effectively a vanilla flavored soda, um, and that's kind of what it feels like as you do to drink it. It has this very pleasant, mild vanilla f -f 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 flavor to it. Uh, it is uh, it it has kind of bubbles as it g -g 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 goes down, uh, and as you drink it, you feel this kind of warming sensation uh, throughout your body, and. Uh, Something that you don't realize until after you've downed it um, is you've been tensing your forehead. And for the first time a jaws that locked. you can remember, you feel the tension kind of release. And you feel your whole body kind of relax for a, 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 a second. And then nothing. You feel calmer but you don't feel drowsy or anything th 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 thing like that. Is there anything specifically you'd like to do, do after do, do drinking it? Well, his intention was he was probably going to, like, <laughs> if he was going to, like, he thought that maybe he might have to, like, take a nap or go to sleep or something. Because mm -hmm. he kind of went into kind of a meditative state when he was being helped the first time. Mm -hmm. And so he, not... was kind of, he was kind of expecting to get knocked out. You're you're not feeling drowsy or anything th thing like that. If you'd like to try and remember more, you kick a can. Uh, but nothing is is instantly coming to the front of your memory or anything th thing like that. I'll first I'll focus on the uh, I'll focus on goggles. Okay. The so guy you, that's why that's why that's why I call him. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So as you sit there and you kind of think about that, uh, the first thing you notice is it's significantly easier to remember that particular memory than it was before before it was it was really hard and you you could barely keep it in your mind's eye for more than a, a few moments before it would kind of flitter away now it just comes up like it happened yesterday um and you can remember everything that you have already seen you remember very very c c clearly um you start getting little bits of things that happen b b b before and after you remember uh, being in that room for a much longer time than you thought was really necessary. Um, and you remember after he left, uh, 
being left in that room again for a longer time than you really felt was necessary. But then the the memory kind of fades. Uh, and you get the idea that while the memory is no longer b -b blocked, it's probably going to take you uh, a little time to actually remember everything that was blocked. So for right now, you remember most of the event or you remember all the events that have already kind of been triggered for you and you know about five minutes before and after each one and that's where the memory kind of fades off um, you get the idea that you're probably going to need to do this over the next few weeks minimum before you start recovering all of it consciously thinking because the potion's spent right yeah the potion's g -g gone yeah, but it okay. seems that the potion what it did was removed the blocks that were making it so you couldn't remember it this is still a memory from you know over a year ago Just looked at a spit with like, well, it's going to be really interesting wherever the hell comes up, especially the what happened at that time and what happened to the armor. So, uh, I don't know what they did to me. Anything else you guys want to do on your your t -t trip? Okay, so you guys like uh uh. Crexton, you've uh, you've taken over one of the rooms. This is just your own, and you've uh, you've started kind of changing things around. You've you've moved things around so you have a much better kind of workbench in your room now. And uh, Ogun has claimed a corner. Uh, has I his think own. That did, did I think she get Reggie's? I think Reggie's out in the because Reggie prefers she to stay chose, out. She chose one of the rooms. I can't remember which one it was. I thought I marked it on the map. Me, I think uh, Reggie's to be the only one available right now, currently, right? Uh, you ready? We have Smegwick, we have Kadas. Yeah, she took the the one at the top because Reggie doesn't get to use it. So, and then obviously the the captain's quarters are are still uh, unoccupied. Yeah, we'll have to have a talk about that later when Reggie seems to be a little bit more active. <laughs> right now, Reggie's on default, and he has like he has like five different random sayings. He just cycles through them all if you try to interact with them. <laughs> It's not Kata, it's Owie. <laughs> it's the wrong one. Yeah, wrong campaign, Jody. Uh, and I don't want it black. Let's do white. There, now I have the, the rooms actually uh, marked. So we know who's this, who's the room. Yay. All right. So uh, the next uh, th th three days are, are, are fairly uh, innocuous. You guys don't find any other traffic. Um, uh, Reggie himself uh, takes care to kind of avoid major trade routes and th things like that, just to be on the safe side. Um, and the morning of the f f fourth day, you guys can see on the horizon... Uh, the skyline of uh, Ebia. Ebia itself, uh, and I'll move this back to the map here. Uh, Ebia uh, itself uh, is an interesting uh, uh, city in that uh, the island itself uh, uh, that it's on is relatively large, but the city itself takes up uh, as little space as possible and built vertically. Um, so mm. the skyline of it, you can see kind of the steeples uh, and tops of a, a, a few of the d -d 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 different b -b 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 buildings on it. Um, and while it's still a, a decently sized uh, city, um, the kind of population density uh, uh, in there, uh, basically once you get inside the city walls, uh, there are no uh, real parks or anything th 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 thing like that. It's just solid buildings everywhere. Uh, and they can uh, go up to 15 to 20 stories to the tall, depending on the b -b buildings. Yikes. So, uh, as you guys get to uh, the dock itself, uh, you uh, come to the d -d dock and you uh, uh, see uh, a group 
of four uh, kenku uh, standing on the d -d 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 dock, and you see them all uh, kind of uh, uh, taking your uh, uh, your ropes to kind of to, to tie you off, and and you know helping you to adjust the like, gangplank and everything. The thing, and every so often you'll just hear phrases that don't quite seem to f -f fit. Like you see him going, "Bloody stupid!" I didn't mean that. Go -go. And they just seem like random words and, and, and f -f phrases that don't seem to correspond to any sort of little language. Uh, and as they're kind of doing it, you s s see uh, this other creature uh, slither uh, to towards you. Uh, the bottom half of the creature uh, is serpentine, uh, and the top half is humanoid, but still kind of scaly. Uh, and it comes over, hello. So, seems you've docked at my dock. Well, let's see. Uh, there's the docking fee. There's uh, the fee for the use of my Kenku. There's uh, boarding fees, obviously. There's upkeep for the fees. And he's just, he has, a, uh, he has an actual abacus, which is a, interesting thing to see someone using but he's just kind of knocking around seems like um yes 42 gold in total back on the ship <laughs> on the positive side the marines don't go here so <laughs> he kind of stops is like mm. <laughs> pain more than we did it did the sky wall uh Make me a history check, uh, Smegwick. Oh, I'm sure that there's prices for, like, that all that stuff. Smegwick's rich. He's just been through so much with people screwing him. Oh, no, this is... Uh, normally, this would be something that Reggie would be d -d doing, but I don't like to speak for, for someone that's not here. Well, seven. Okay, so... Um... I'm going to switch his fickle dice, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Put those uh, in dice jail. He, uh, uh, I mean, he explained how all the fees work. So, I mean, it, it, it seems like that's obviously the the, the, the fees. And, of, of course, no one would ever try to take advantage of anyone, especially in Ebia. And, so. I mean, unless you want to say, Rich, give me the help action or something. Um, I'll, but, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and take advantage for the r r r roll. And I would say, Queen Venus, you could you could roll this ch -ch check as well, because you would, uh, especially working on uh, the carnival for as long as you did. Okay, well, that time is 15. Okay. Uh, mine is 21. 21. So between Good the Lord. two of you, um, you would both, uh, from your uh, experience in uh, the m m m military, and specifically, um, you, were, you were effectively given a very brief uh, explanation when you were uh, uh, in the m m m Marines, which basically said, if you ever go to Ebia, whatever price they tell you is a lie. You don't trust them. <laughs> um, Crixney, on the other hand... You've actually watched how this works, and effectively, uh, this is this is kind of a game to um, them. Like they they're they're I'm going gonna... to 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 give you the most outlandish price they can possibly come up with, um, and it will instantly tell them what kind of person you are uh, if you accept it or if you to try to haggle them. I was gonna say, so I think I have, I don't know if it's sleight of hand or thief hand or something. Can I kind of go around, put my arm around him and be like, hey, how about I make you a deal? And I pull money out of his pocket and say, I'll give you what oh. I have in my hand. Uh, oh, that, God. that would be a sleight of hand check. Um, so if, if you want to do, 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 do that, uh, yeah, go ahead and make a, a sleight of hand check. Oh. <clears throat> 10, that okay. sucks. So. Uh, pass if I can see you did that. So, um, <laughs> so you, um, so you go over there and you kind of put your arm around and you go, Hey, you know, we're all for friends here. And as you reach into his pocket, um, with blinding speed, he grabs on to your wrist and mm. kind of sees you with the money in your fingertips. So it seems that we have a thief. I should probably call this city guard have you arrested immediately for attempting to defraud a public official but I, in a beer okay i am 
rather gracious person. Let's say your docking fee has just doubled. Smegwick is going to step in then because you'd be like, okay, friend, she, uh, points for like, like points for points for in, for initiative. Look, we both know how things work here in Abia. She was simply trying to be, be a little bit more she innova was innovative. Attempting to steal from me. Uh, I wasn't going to steal. I was giving it right back. <laughs> You're going to borrow. Uh, <laughs> Where is that thing? I like thing? that logic. What is still, I was going to give it back. Right back. Well, we all know how things work here in a beer. She was simply trying. You were trying to get one over us. You're going to get over here. Game, respect, game. So let's say, and this is like, this is not a spell. I'm using fey presence. So at least for at least a round, he's going to make me a wisdom DC 16 saving throw. Okay. Or become charmed. So... Uh, okay. Surely you can understand we're all trying to make our way in the make our way into sovereignty. So for Fae Presence, it's not a spell. Does it specifically say magic in it anywhere, put, or would it would it count as a magical effect? As my copy paste, that uh, would be useful. Okay, once we're sure. Okay, he doesn't specifically have anything against charm. It's magic that he has a thing for. So I'm gonna say yeah, that's that's the reason why it's advantage. not a spell. I'm gonna say he doesn't get his advantage on this. Okay. Well, I rolled a three. Yay! So it really doesn't mm -hmm. matter what his wisdom score is. It's not that good. 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 Um. So as you do that, you kind of start exuding. This this f -f 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 presence. So surely there's no need for such hostility here, friend. We're all trying to make our way. That's understandable. I mean, I would strongly recommend your friend either improve her technique or get out of the business. You will meet people far less forgiving than me. And see, that is constructive criticism to improve your skill set or try a different skill set. See? However, there still is the matter of dock fees. So, unless you have something else to say. The dog fees are still 42 gold pieces. And also, I'm, I'm sure, like, ships come and go here all the time, right? Uh, uh, across the board, illicit and legal. Yeah, it's it's a decently busy to the dock. But d does a sovereignty also show up here as, as well occasionally? Uh, the only sovereignty sh sh ships that ever sh sh show up here are uh, on the payroll, effectively. Uh, sovereignty okay. ships Cookie. specifically do not show up to Evia. They they avoid it like the p -p plague. Okay. Most of them because they are encouraged to, 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 to monetarily. So no sovereignty ship. If a sovereignty ship ever did it to docks here, something has gone dreadfully wrong for someone. That's what I'm afraid of. Well, right now, okay. Uh, it's like, all right, call us. We'll call it all good. Forty-two. Uh, is there somewhere off in the distance we can we can park? I'm sure, you don't want us right oh, here. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like one of our more secluded docks. Yes, of course. We have exactly what you would like. Just however. looking for an available spot. Come on now. You're already getting forty-two friggin' gold out of us. Well, if you would like to avoid people knowing you are here, there's an additional fee for that. If you're going to make my work more d difficult, I should be adequately compensated. Don't you agree? I think for an additional... You and I both know you're going to skim off the top. 
you and I both know you're already going to skim off the top of what you're already get gouging this boy in the first place. What would you offer in return, then? 42 friggin' gold that we didn't haggle for at all. Make a persuasion check with the disadvantage. Can I see if anything around him looks like it could be easily fixed? Uh, sure. The heat that belongs to him? Sure. Uh, you can make, around. um... Oh, uh, you do that. Sorry, Snuggly. Oh, okay. Kinda. You can make a, an investigation check uh, for, 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 for that. Or a perception check, whichever you'd pr pr prefer. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Pretty good. Disadvantage, 13. So you're trying to, to, to tell me that you paid the correct fee and somehow I should be thanking you for, for, for that after I have already forgiven your friend here from stealing for me? Is that your uh, offer you are m m making? I have 45. And no one has to be the wiser about what you're skimming. The additional fee is 15 gold, bringing the t -t -t total so to 57. 15 plus 3. So if I rolled an 18 for, and you said investigation? Mm-hmm. 18 uh, for investigation. So looking around, uh, you actually are just kind of glancing around. You see that K -K Kekus uh, uh, are... Um, by the way, um, uh, Keku are uh, raven uh, of a people. So they, okay. they, they're, they're basically um, anthropomorphized ravens. Okay. Uh, so you can see the, the Kenku... Uh, not Keku, Kenku. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, K -K Kenku are... Um, uh, over there, kind of messing with one of uh, the uh, uh, braces for, for ships and things like that. And you can see that as they're tying things uh, to, to, to them, uh, they're not particularly skilled in what they're doing. And you do see a couple of the, the dock areas are uh, not quite uh, uh, as well kept as they sh sh should be. Is there anything that I can do? Can I either teach them how to something that's not too time consuming? Your, to your help mending them? spell, uh, a couple castings of your mending spell would 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 f f fix uh, one of them. Okay, so can I then instead of try to bargain with him for all the fees to put us in a secluded place to help fix his dock? Uh, sure. If uh, you'd like to do that, uh, I'll have you make uh, a uh, charisma persuasion to the check. Mm -hmm. Uh, so is let's see persuasion oh it's always possible 21 21 yeah. wow that's a, that's a nat 20 by the way yeah oh, not bad, bad, bad at all so um as you uh uh as you see that smegwick is dying here <laughs> my um, bad sir <laughs> uh he you you could, could kind of uh just kind of wander over and you kind of put your shipbuilding hat on you're just like, oh, look at this here, you know, looking at this, this is definitely not up to code. You know, I mean, these are, you know, you're using three quarter inch screws. You definitely should be using uh, probably about five, eight inch screws on this one over here. And then these bolts are the exact wrong kind of, you're using metric system. It definitely should be imperial for these particular ones. <laughs> and, and you just start rattling off your kind of almost encyclopedic knowledge of, of shipbuilding into the general here. Well, I could definitely, you know, I could definitely fix that. Or, you know, probably would be easier is I know that you guys have got to have a, uh, a an office here that deals with keeping things up to standards. I could probably just walk over uh, to the standards office and have them come out here and they'll tell you exactly what. And as soon as you start talking about standards and fees and the, the things like that, he's like, duh. I need someone else's I, attention here is what he doesn't yeah. want. Yeah, he goes, so, um, no, that sounds like a good deal. We'll leave it at 42 gold and you get the uh, remaining uh, uh, prices paid and services surrendered. Sounds Perfect. good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Nice gentleman. Uh, I will leave um, 
Quack. Quack. Get over here. Squawk. Duck. <laughs> Smelly. Quack. You leave. <laughs> Quack. Get, get over here. It's probably not even their names. He just calls them. <laughs> no, he just Whatever. randomly calls them. <laughs> and you see the, the Kenku come over and he goes, Squawk! And he sounds identical to uh, this guy. Yes, yes. I, you'll, uh, take them to the special doc. Special doc! Special Bastard! Doc. Stop <laughs> And the, uh, the I can, over. can Bastard! I, can I remember uh, anything about uh, this particular uh, quirk of their uh, species? Uh, Kenku are not an uncommon species in the sovereignty. They are, um, uh, they're, they're native to the Fifafaywild, um, but just because of the Aarakocra be, being native to um, the Sovereignty and everything. There's a fair number of here, and they don't have a language of their own, but they can uh, unerringly mimic other Kuka creatures. And so they, they mm -hmm. tend to pick up little bits and pieces of other uh, languages, and they use that to kind of create their mm -hmm. own way of Kuka communicating. The way they communicate amongst themselves is through a bunch of kind of chirps and whistles mm -hmm. that no one has really kind of figured out that's non-Kenku. Um, but they're able to communicate with other river races by just imitating uh, uh, yeah. other th the things. So. Mm. And what about our stowaway? Can he get off yet? Can we just like throw him? <laughs> well, here's yeah. the thing. Here, here's the interesting thing. I don't think Thomas <laughs> wants to get off here. I don't think so either. But <laughs> if he wants to be the cabin boy, yeah, he can go right ahead. So. The Kenku comes over and he, he kind of points you towards your ship. Pretty bird. <laughs> I actually think before, uh, like, did Thomas come up above or did he stay below? Because I think uh, like, he's, he's staying below a, r r r r right now. He's, I think, he's, yeah, he's I was going to ask him, like, I think he knows better to come up right he's, now. He's not particularly fond Oh, yeah, of because he's still in uniform, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not like, coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> bird. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. The, the Kenku seems to be getting uh, quack. Uh, seems to be getting a little impatient. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. All right, let's go. <laughs> so he gets out and he kind of directs you guys to a dock that is way away f -f 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 from everything else. You guys basically mm -hmm. sail uh, uh, on a a a effectively you sail underneath the city for a little bit and you come to this dock uh, that is inside the city walls themselves very very secluded Rexy, that brings up an idea uh, we might All need done. some uh... okay bye thanks buddy yeah. Mikenku's kind of wandering wait, wait. around very briefly gets a a, 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 a glimpse of, of Ogun goes mother <laughs> you know, guy just goes. Ken <laughs> the Kenku kind of <laughs> goes over and goes. He <laughs> <laughs> mimics him. <laughs> oh, guy just walks away. He gets annoyed. <laughs> Mother! <laughs> All done. <laughs> and then he comes. Uh, to, he comes. Uh, uh, he comes down and he helps you kind of get you guys settled. And he kind of turns around and goes, Adios, motherfuckers! And then leaves. <laughs> what I was gonna, well, yeah, before all that happened, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we might, maybe we can get some materials here. We might need a couple yes. of, um, how can I put this, alternative nameplates for the side of our ship. Fair enough. I'll pick up, can we pick up some trinkets too so I have stuff to work with while we're here? Yeah, Ebia, yeah, whatever, um, what, yeah. Ebia tends to be known as a p -p place where you can find hard to find items. It's not quite like Vox's Landing. You, If you've got the money, you can find anything in Vox's Landing. Ebia, if you've got the connections, you generally can find what you want. Hmm. We're here for two things. Looking, we got a resupply, looking for various things that, we may, that everyone may need. Hmm. And three work mm. 
Okay, can we look and see what's in our immediate views to know where, where we're going? Oh, sure, where you guys are no, no, now uh, in Evia, uh, you can see there's there's a very kind of narrow alley uh, and it leads to uh, a major uh, street. Um, With shops on it or just the road? Uh, from where you are right now, you actually can't see what's on the road. The, the alley itself is not only narrow, but it has a bunch of stuff in the way so that Anyone looking from the street on would never think to come down the, the, this alley. Another okay. thing that kind of helps with you being an, an anonymous here. Um, however, um, that is where we are going to end it for t -t 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 today. Um, as always, uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, but, but please, uh, uh, you, uh, it, you know, just try this one more time. If you enjoyed this, uh, but you missed any of the episode, I do upload all these to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash trainer Jody. Uh, you can catch the entire Scissor series there. Um, and uh, every Wednesday night, I run D&D uh, &D here. So next week will be a different campaign. Uh, but you're welcome to c c come back. And uh, every other week, it's this. And then the other weeks, it's, it's another one. And, and Imp is on both of them because that's my life. Uh, and then this Saturday uh, on twitch.tv slash Zelda Universe to TV, um, mm -hmm. I run a Legend of Zelda mm -hmm. uh, themed yeah. um, RPG uh, with wonderful, amazing, lovely p -p people. So anyway, I'm in there too. Yes. Thanks. And yes, uh, uh, Krexny, uh, Queen Venus's uh, sister Chax is, is there. So it's lovely. Anyway, uh, again, that is all for me today. And I will see you, you, you guys na -na 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 next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.